Hello, Kansas City, and welcome to the next installment of Climate Conversations, a product of Climate Action KC in cooperation with the Mid-America Regional Council. I am Mike Kelly, and I'm here today with Chuck Kaisley of Evergy. Chuck, thank you so much for your time. Mike, it's my pleasure to be here. Really appreciate the opportunity. Chuck, as you know, we're here as a part of Energy and Industry Week in the Climate Action Plan collaborative prioritization process. And Chuck, you're surely uh, an expert as it relates to energy. Senior Vice President of Marketing and Public Affairs for our electric utility, Evergy. Uh, Evergy's really been instrumental in reducing greenhouse emissions in Kansas City uh, by doing quite a few things. Chuck, do you mind starting us off by just giving us a little bit of background on, on you and Evergy and your efforts to implement sustainability at the electric utility? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, Chuck Kaisley and I'm, I, I actually do all the stuff on the customer side, which happens to be a lot of the things uh, that directly touch sustainability, like energy efficiency programs and electric vehicles and rate structures that, that help people uh, who are interested in being more prescriptive with the way they use electricity and, and saving on electricity and, and saving money. And so I've been doing this for about, uh, well, almost 14 years now. And uh, you nailed it. I mean, we are, the, by, by being the energy provider for the region, um, you can't really do that and not have sustainability and a climate plan as a central part of, of your operating model. And, and really, since I've been here, uh, starting out with the, the, the clean energy plan that we announced uh, back in 2005, all the way to more recent announcements around decarbonization, uh, it's something that we've been really working hard on. And, and I think one of the things that, that we try and impress the most to customers and, and to folks uh, in the media who cover this kind of thing is green is, is really uh, a trifold thing for us, which is one, it's, it's, it's being more green and, and more sustainable. But done the right way, it's also a more cost effective uh, way to run a business like ours. Uh, and really anybody's business. And, and the second thing is that it has a greening effect of the economy here because all of the jobs for the most part that are created are, are, are created locally when you're talking about dealing with climate issues. And so it's, it's really a triple green kind of thing. It's central to who we are and, and uh, love to have the chance to talk about it. Yeah, obviously we're big proponents of that triple bottom line as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, the challenges that uh, changing climate is having on, on not only all of our residents, but disproportionately residents that are already vulnerable, low income residents. And I know that's something that you at Evergy have been working on. Uh, given the, the issue of the day with the, the pandemic here, can you tell me a little bit about what uh, Evergy is doing uh, to aid its low income residents, and I guess all residents uh, in dealing with COVID-19? Sure. Well, we, I think we were the first or the second maybe utility in the United States to announce a moratorium on disconnections and late fees. It's really hard for customers to pay bills when you have 30%, 35% unemployment and, and people who have jobs that demand human contact that they just weren't able to do, whether it's retail jobs, whether it's a, a hairstylist or barber, you know, things like that um, become, you know, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And fortunately, I think all of the investor-owned utilities in the United States followed suit and did that as well. Um, but we started there. Uh, we've also increased uh, the flexibility uh, around payment. Now, um, residential customers can take up to 12 months to pay any arrears that they've built up over this time period. And we're still not disconnecting uh, as, as we speak. We've extended that out through July 15. And then I think, you know, as we go forward, um, we will make some announcements of additional programs and additional funding that we're going to give our customers to, to get through this. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't help our community, whether those the folks that are employed or, or just, you know, our, our bottom line, if, if businesses go out of, of business uh, because uh, of the, the times that they're going through. So anything that we can do to help something that, that we're going to do. And we've already announced the disconnection moratorium. We've announced several million dollars of, of contributions uh, to help people pay their bills, as well as to grants for small businesses and things like that. Um, but, but stay tuned, because there's going to be more. Well, uh, appreciate what you've done and what you'll continue to do. 
Uh, but let's dive into the uh, emissions inventory. Climate Action KC put out its regional emissions inventory, found that building energy uh, is one of our, our leading contributor to greenhouse emissions. 32% uh, of the region's greenhouse emissions are from building energy. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and how might we reduce that number as it relates to buildings? Well, I think the first, the first thing, there, there are first two real simple things, uh, and, then, and then I'll go into a third that uh, we think is underutilized. The, the first thing is, you know, when buildings are being built, you have to remember those are 50 years, 75 year, 100 year plus assets. And too often, uh, the folks that are building them think only in terms of first cost and not cost both to operate and to the environment over time. So we are very supportive of building codes that take a look at more efficient building structures, uh, more sustainable building structures, but also would just encourage folks that are building um, buildings and, and retrofitting buildings to really think about the long-term operating costs, both from a financial and, and from a climate perspective. The second thing I think is even if you are not um, building or retrofitting a, a building, there are lots of opportunities to learn how to run buildings in a very cost-effective way uh, more, more efficiently. And that's something that we don't see a lot of, a, a lot of people doing either. We actually have a, uh, a workshop that we put on multiple times a year to help uh, building owners learn how to, to run their buildings more efficiently. And, and that's something that, that, that certainly we would encourage as well. Maybe the third thing, though, is on the Missouri side, not as much on the Kansas side, we're still working on that, but on the Missouri side, we have a, a ton of uh, incentives uh, for businesses and residential customers to invest in energy efficiency. They're essentially uh, dollars that we give to buy down the cost of making an investment to make your building more efficient. And the reason we do that is that collectively, if we can get enough people to reduce their energy usage, particularly at peak times in the, in the summer afternoons and evenings, then that is actually cheaper to invest in our customers than it is to, to build more generation or to operate less efficient uh, coal plants. And so what we like to do is, is really partner with those folks so they've got a, they've got a better sustainable uh, footprint, their operating costs go down, making them more competitive, and it helps the, the overall environment across a multitude of, of areas. Definitely, and we'd love to see something like that in Kansas. We're um, working on it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll work with you. Um, Great. Let me move on in the interest of time to another component that everyone might not immediately think of when they think about our electric utility, and that's on-road transportation emissions. That's our largest single source of emissions in the Kansas City regional area, 34%. Tell me a little bit about the clean charge network uh, and uh, a way that we might electrify transportation. So of all the things that um, Evergy has done in my time here, perhaps the thing that I'm most proud of is the clean charge network. It still is the largest uh, charging station network operated by an investor owned utility in the United States. It was absolutely catalytic in, in putting this region on the map uh, from an electric vehicles perspective. Uh, when we started, we weren't in, even in the top 40 metros uh, in the United States in terms of electric vehicle adoption. As we sit here today, um, our percentage change over the last uh, five years since 2015 when we, when we originally started installing these has been astronomical and we're now in the, in the top five. And, and certainly from a density of EV drivers to available charging stations, um, we're number one in the country. And so, you know, as an electric utility, we don't want to dominate this, this market like, uh, like uh, homes or, or buildings and, and, and restrict competition. Uh, from our perspective, anybody who wants to put up a charging station, um, we're going to try and help them. At the end of the day, they're using electricity, by and large, that we make. So it's not like we want to have a monopoly on the charging stations. What we do want to do, though, is be catalytic to removing barriers and costs and perceptions around this. Because from a financial perspective and from an emissions perspective, these right now today are cheaper, more efficient, better vehicles and in 95 to 97 percent of the use cases out there for families and for businesses 
there is a price competitive vehicle that's electrified that will do the job. There are, there are some places like over the road trucking, heavy equipment and things like that, we're not quite there yet. But when you're talking about uh, delivery vehicles, when you're talking about uh, private personal vehicles, um, these are cheaper vehicles to operate, there's less maintenance, they, they get rid of all of the ozone and other um, pollutant contributions that come out of normal tailpipes and, and we want to be catalytic uh, to making that happen. All right, Chuck, last question, same question we ask everyone in these climate conversations. What is your vision for a climate resilient Kansas City metro area? You know, I think, I, I think it is kind of mind share uh, throughout uh, the community. There are pockets that are working very, very hard on this and that have a lot of resources um, and, and, and understand what this is all about. But there is an ingrained mindset uh, and, and, and just neglect in, in a whole bunch of different sectors um, where they don't put climate and they don't put sustainability at the, at the top of the pecking order. And you know, so one of the things that we wanna keep doing as a, as a having a platform as, as the utility and the energy provider in the region is to continually bring this up and remind people of that, that triple green effect. It's, it's more cost effective, it is uh, local economy, local jobs, and of course that it is, it is sustainable. And so we have a plan, uh, you know, we announced uh, what I would characterize as a very middle of the road, being very honest, uh, decarbonization plan where where uh, by 2050, we would be 80% below uh, 2005 levels. But I think as the ensuing years uh, come here, you're gonna see us get a lot more aggressive about that. And I just think that this needs to be top of mind in, in, in policy conversations um, around the, the region. This is something that municipal governments are by and large doing a pretty good job of. This is something that really large companies have on the radar screen. But once you get out of those two groups, um, there's a knowledge gap, there's a funding gap, and, and there's, there's a real gap in sense of urgency. And I think that's where the next frontier on this is. Well, we surely agree with you on that one. And so for all of you that have thoughts on uh, Chuck's conversation or on a vision for a climate resilient Kansas City, please join us for this conversation at climateactionkc.mindmixer.com to share your vision, to share your thoughts as we work together for the Kansas City region. Everybody have a great day. Chuck, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure, thanks for having me.